Samira, as a young woman, you had a near-death experience on the occasion of an accident. How did this come about? As a child, I wanted to become a dancer, and that was something I felt very, very strongly about. At the age of 17, I was already giving dance lessons, and I was member of a dance company. We had a dance performance almost every weekend. And then, at the age of 20, I had the feeling that I would like to become professional. So I registered for a course, and I passed the admission exam. This was actually a small miracle, because I was much too old at this point. Um, I was a little bit more than 20 years old, and most of the candidates were 14. So I was delighted to be accepted. I trained day and night to prepare my body in order to keep up with the group. And then the day came when my life changed. I went home by bicycle, and on the way, I stopped off to do some shopping to buy some new bed linens. There was, however, no space left for it on the luggage carrier of my bicycle because my training gear was already there. So I had to squeeze the bed linen into my backpack. Then I put the backpack on, strapped it to my back, and so uh, off I went. And by bike, I passed by the dance school, which every time I did, exalted me. I felt so happy to be starting dancing there again soon. But some yards further on, I suddenly heard a loud bang. And I can still recollect that I thought, what was that? But at this very moment, I was already thrown through the air. I was thrown over the car which hit me, and I fell on my back. And then when I collided with the asphalt of the street, I was pulled away. At that moment, did you have your near-death experience? Yes. Thereupon, I floated above the location of this accident. I saw my body lying on the street. I saw cars coming from behind and stopping suddenly. I saw people nervously running here and there. There was great agitation at the scene of, of the accident, but I was floating up there quietly with unbelievable calm and also weightless. I felt light as a feather, simply watching everything from this distance. Then suddenly I felt a powerful suction, and I was pulled away from the scene of the accident, and very far away I saw a light. This light was so incredibly beautiful. It was actually like, well, it's difficult to put into words. I felt that this could be a being, comparable with living light. It was neither warm nor cold. It was simply incredibly beautiful. And the only thing I knew was that I would like to move there. Then I continued to approach the light, one might say, the closer I came, the more I felt that I didn't want to go back from there into my body anymore. The only thing I wanted was to stay there. Suddenly, I had the feeling that someone was standing beside me. I was somewhat confused, really. Really pretty confused. What's going on here? Then I saw a figure standing beside me, which I recognized as my spiritual friend you might say. I knew him from my childhood. I had discussed a lot with him. He always had been there for me. He was able to comfort me when I was sad. He answered all my questions. And that is why I recognized him. He was standing beside me, fully present. He made a gesture to stop me from approaching the light and said to me very calmly, Stop. You must not go further from here. When he told me this, I was unbelievably shocked because I had a very strong sensation of being attracted by the light. And so I asked him, staring at him in disbelief, after all, why is it not possible for me to go further? I'm here. And he replied, your time has not yet come. You have to go back. 
you still have a task on earth. But I tried to convince him by all available means that it's right for me to move there. But he said again, no, your time has not yet come. Well, his appearance was very determined. I asked him, but why? I don't understand why I have to go back now. Even as a child, I never could understand why I was here in this body. Because for me, this always has meant a duty. As a child, I sometimes looked out of the window, somehow knowing that there was more out there. I always felt that I was a stranger here. I found myself in the position of a tourist who has lost his way. I could not see the meaning of life in general. That means the reason why we have to be here. After having told him that, I felt again how he took me by the hand, so to speak, because this was not really a hand, but let's just say he took me by the hand. And then suddenly we were flying over a vast city. There were high-rise buildings and skyscrapers, each one higher than the other. And between these skyscrapers, I saw streets with many, many people moving about, comparable with a swarm of ants. However, this city seemed to me to be unbelievably heavy and dark. And so I asked myself what he intended to show me. And he said to me, come on, let's get a little closer. Then you will see what I would like to show you. All communication happened by way of thought, and everything happened very quickly. So we got closer, and I could see these people, and suddenly I could find exactly the same light inside everybody. It was this light which I had seen before. It was inside of everyone, like a flame. And in the moment in which I realized this, they all looked up, so to speak, beaming into the atmosphere like a torch beam, many, many torches all together. And this light connected into a hole, comparable with a web put around the globe. And at that instant, I realized that I also was part of this light. That means that the light was not there where I wanted to move, but that it is inside of me. And just at that moment of being aware of this, I was again catapulted back downward into my body. And when I was again lying there on the street, I heard someone saying, I have to turn her. This was because something was streaming out of my mouth. And people were afraid that I might suffocate, because this is what you are taught in medical emergency training. But thankfully, I was conscious again, and that's what saved me, actually, in the sense that I did not end up in a wheelchair. Since I felt that something was wrong with my back, I could make myself understood now, asking them, good heavens, don't turn me, please don't touch me, do nothing. Now I could already hear the ambulance approaching at high speed. The emergency attendants placed an air bed underneath my body, which they could inflate with air. And then they carefully slid the air bed onto the ambulance coach. That means really inch by inch in order to avoid vertebrae to be shifted. Due to the fact that the bed linen I had purchased before was still in the backpack, not all vertebrae were broken. So this really was incredible good luck, which I had at this moment. But nevertheless, there were some vertebral fractures, and consequently I had to stay in bed for quite a long time. It was my own stubborn self-will that did not see why I shouldn't proceed with my projected dance training, and so I returned. But unfortunately, I was a bit late joining, and I participated in the training under very heavy pain. But looking back now, I know why I had to do so. It was because we had a ballet teacher teaching the ballet performances, thereby introducing really curious exercises 
which made me wonder what was going on. And after these exercises, I no longer had pain. And so one day, I asked the ballet master, what's this? What exactly are those exercises? And she replied, this is yoga. And this was an inspiration for me. I went home to my boyfriend of the time and told him that I would be going to India to an ashram in order to study yoga. And that is what I did. This is still with me today because for me, yoga is a tool in order to be able to share something with people. You can take anything to share with people. So let's go back to this city with the people. Was this city an earthly city? I can't say that. I really have no idea. According to my inner world of images, it looked like New York City, for example. I've never been there, but creating my own imagery, I think it's comparable with that city. You spoke about an appearance and a teacher. What did you see him as, this appearance? I saw him as a spirit. In my childhood, I always felt he was with me. Perhaps one could say like a guarding angel or a spirit teacher. It was just like a form of energy which was known to me. One time, when I was a child, he told me, don't hesitate to give me a name if it helps you in case you'd like to call on me. So I called him Nathaniel because I like this name very much and I still use it today. But this is only a tool for me. He himself does not have a name. What impact did this near-death experience have on your future life? Well, it had a huge impact, because from this moment on, I knew why I was here, and I understood the meaning of life, and also the reason why I am here. I mean, my task. This has given me incredible insight. And it also meant an experience of awareness for me. I realized that the light is always superior and that it makes no difference whether we are here or when we die, it belongs together, which means that life is there and it is also here. It flows together. We originate from this light and we will go back there again. This was my primary experience. And another one is that sometimes I see an image of two rooms separated by a wall. And in this wall, there is a door. One of these rooms is very dark and black, and the other room is full of light. When I open now the door in this wall, what will happen? Will the dark move into the light or will the light move into the dark. This image is very symbolic for me, also with respect to this near-death experience. Today, I simply know this is for me alone, and I rely on the truth that there are so many things between the earth and the sky that we do not know. Here, we often forget things, but I will never forget this experience. I won't say that I'll be happy when I have to die, but let's say that it's a nice feeling for me to know that we are allowed to pass away and also that I have learned to love life here on earth because I'd say there's a lot to do here. This is a beautiful message and it's so wonderful to share it. Samira, thank you very much for this interview. It's I who thank you.